I recently found a pile of games that I didn't want anymore. Games like Cars uh, for, the, for the GameCube. And I traded them in at GameStop for their low prices. But um, I actually got some pretty good money for uh, Mario Party 10. Because even though it's one of the worst Mario Parties of all time, I uh, got it for $10, which is extremely impressive uh, for GameStop standards. And while I was there, I decided to shop around a little bit. And while I was there, I found these for $13. These RVL uh, 011 official component cables uh, for the Wii. And these deliver uh, much better video quality than their, than their uh, composite than, than, than their composite counterparts. But <clears throat> they all use the same cable. And I wanted to get the official version because... I've had um, like three-in-one component versions before. I've had a Wii 2 HDMI, and those are great. I'm thinking of getting rid of the um, the three-in-one though, because it's crap for me at least. And the HDMI I'll probably keep for uh, the day when all component and analog inputs are uh, deleted from TVs um, all around. So I played around with these component cables a little bit. Uh, the the official on my HDTV, plugged it in directly to my Wii, and I actually got pretty good video quality. It's uh, It was better than both the third party and HDMI, and especially composite. Um, uh, I tried uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee with these, and they looked very good, but I wanted... Uh, I played uh, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, which I actually uh, homebrewed my Wii for, and I did that with and I also found out that uh, these actually look better than the uh, Wii U's HDMI. So they, uh, so they, in my opinion, actually look better than uh, HDMI, at least for the Wii U. I've seen HDMI mods for uh, the Nintendo Wii, uh, uh, like the Wii Duel by Dan Coons, I believe. But uh, I've seen those have chroma issues, but I will say they have a, a very sharp picture. While I was doing research on... Um, you, you know, the RVL-011 component cables, I actually decided to look at the other numbers. And I found out that there was also a D-terminal cable released in Japan, because that's what they used. And they also had an RGB SCART cable, and that carried RGB, which, um, for the Nintendo Wii's case, actually looks a little bit better than component. But that, uh, that, that got me thinking, how is RGB converted to component, and how is uh, component converted back? And why does uh, why does component look worse than RGB most cases? The second question I believe is easy because I think that RGB and component are actually very much alike, and when done right, component can look just as good as RGB. But RGB in practice is much better than component simply because uh, RGB it doesn't have to be uh, converted to component in any ways, and sometimes the converters can suck, the cables can suck. These these don't really, but I've tested them with my Wii U, and I've got some pretty bad ghosting and horizontal sync issues. But remember, these were made for 480p content, so I'll go easy on these. And um, and a another thing is that uh, when TVs receive an RGB signal, the only thing they have to do is convert it to digital and send it to the display. Uh, but with component, it has to be converted internally, which can also uh, degrade the quality if it's not a very good uh, converter. But that leads us to the first question I asked, how is RGB converted to component, and how is com component converted back? So what I, fit, what I found out is that component video is called YPBPR. That's in its analog form. If you want to find it in its digital form, that's YCBCR. And uh, the, the, what that means is the Y is the Luma, which, uh, which also carries the sync. It is shown in the green cable here. The green cable carries the Luma and the sync. And it is, uh, it is the uh, concrete which the blue and red cables will pile on top of. And uh, keep in mind that there are two red cables, so uh, you can have white and red, and if you mix them up, you will have a uh, one one ear will have a buzzy audio, 
and you will have extremely weird uh, red conversions, which I'll get to in a second, because uh, the blue wire is the difference between uh, the, the luma, which is just brightness, black and white, and blue. So what this does is uh, it converts, basically when, when this receives a signal, it'll kind of turn the red, green, and blue, and it'll kind of shift a little bit towards the blue, right? But uh, that's not the whole story. See, I also found out that the red is the difference between luma and red. Uh, what this does is basically the same thing. Turns it from a black and white signal and shifts it over to the, the red pixel in a uh, RGB pixel layout on most color uh, televisions. Uh, one, one person I found, uh, said that, um, the, the green, you may, you may be wondering where the green is, because these, uh, these do not carry green, it's not, uh, this does not carry, uh, green, red, and blue. Remember, uh, what, what I just explained is what these carry. So you might ask, well, where does green come from, and all the, and, and all the colors in between, you can't just go shift from red to blue to green. Otherwise, th this format would be even worse than, you know, RF. I have constructed a graph uh, showing how YPBPR is converted to RGB. See, uh, Y is simply the strength. So, the strength of the signal going up uh, means that the, uh, that, that means the brightness is brighter. Uh, here, we have the PBPR signal. Uh, so, basically, the way this works is, the way P PBPR works is, Right in the middle here, that represents uh, black and white. If you go to if if you go up the PB signal, you will uh, eventually go from you know gray to grayish blue all the way to blue. So um, yeah, and then here we have the same thing. So gray and then grayish red or pink, if you want to be precise. If we're doing white here, then uh, this will turn into red. And then, if you combine these two, if you uh, if you put these at uh, maximum signal at the same time, you'll get uh, magenta, not purple, not violet, magenta. Uh, and if you, another thing is, it, it can actually go below the brightness signal and create uh, PB. See the the opposite of blue in uh, well uh, additive and subtractive colors is yellow. So uh, if you have blue. The opposite of that would be red and green, or yellow. So you get yellow, and the uh, opposite of red would be green and blue at the same time, which would be cyan. And the same applies here. Gray, grayish, yellow, yellow. Gray, grayish, cyan, cyan. And the same thing for uh, uh, magenta. Gray, and then grayish magenta, and then full magenta. And so if you have, if you have both of these going below the luma, then I believe you get uh, you you get green because it subtracts uh, both of these and cancels out the red and blue in each other and you will get green. Uh, so this is actually um, this graph is actually a little bit shifted. So you'll get like a more uh, cyanish kind of color here and a uh, tiny little bit more like uh, yellow magenta-ish color, I think. Now, I think the reason they do that is because this whole section would be just unwanted cyan and blue, and this would be, uh, you know, th this would actually be a little more useful with red, orange, yellow, but no one really needs that much color information for that, so I think they shift it a little bit to keep the color a little more rounded in the, in, in the uh, color space. But, um, I'm no expert, so I, I can't, you know, uh, mo modulate these myself. I can't create my own uh, circuit to do that, although it's, it's all analog. There, there are no digital conversions here unless you're using YCBCR. The best way to explain uh, additive and subtractive colors, so uh, a lot of people think that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. That is wrong in every sense of the word, because you can make red with colors and you can make blue with colors. Also, with additive colors, it's red, green, and blue. This is uh, the, the colors that your monitor uses. And, um, see, if, if you shine a red flashlight at a white wall, 
in, in the dark and you shine a green flashlight onto that red flashlight, you'll get yellow. You will not get brown or whatever you do, mixing those with uh, paint or colored crayons or something. And uh, the best way to explain magenta, yellow, and cyan, those are the real uh, subtractive uh, colors in primary color systems. So I think the best way to explain uh, magenta, yellow, and cyan is actually using uh, film photography. So here I have a film negative that I shot. Now, uh, I apologize if it looks black and white here, but you can see the school buses here. They look just a tad bit blue. And I can't really see it, but uh, trust my word. And the, the way this works is... Uh, What's opposite of blue? Well, red and green, or yellow. Uh, what's opposite of red? Well, green and blue, or cyan. And the opposite of blue is... Oh, I already said that. The opposite of um, green is uh, red and blue, or uh, magenta. So, that's how that works. So, uh, basically what happens is, they're all negative, so that, uh, when they scan it, or print it, or whatever, that's a negative of the negative, creating a positive, and then they do some color correction, and you get something like this. Now, uh, this here, these are the same blue buses, but they were uh, negatived again, so the blue turned into red and green or yellow. Uh, and this here, this is blue, uh, which would be uh, yellowish on the negative, but you, you really can't see it on the negative, even uh, with a good light source, because uh, just, the, just the, the nature of the negative itself, you just can't really see it. But you can definitely tell that the uh, third picture on this roll is this here. And uh, I think, in my opinion, the best way to explain it is, see if you had a uh, film with uh, with green or uh, yellow and then magenta and then cyan, if you mix yellow and cyan together, you will get, uh, I think, yeah, you'll get green. And then uh, magenta and yellow, you'll get red. And then yellow and cyan, you'll get, well, green. Actually, cyan and magenta, you'll, you'll get uh, uh, blue. So, and if you mix all those together at the same time, you'll get black. And that's how color negative film works. So I think that's the best way to explain it. And I think what's happening here is uh, the, it, it works the same for component. Uh, and um, YCBCR is actually uh, how DVDs and Blu-rays are encoded. So the HDMI signal that you're getting is actually YCBCR, not, not RGB. So that has to be converted by our TV digitally. Uh, because, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a digital signal. That's uh, kind of how it works. But uh, yeah, I, I thought I'd uh, show this video on explaining uh, how uh, the, the YPBPR color space works. And um, uh, I, I know I'm not an expert and I probably got a couple things wrong, but that's pretty much the basics of it. And uh, that's, that's really all you need to know. Also, uh, I'm proud of this. Don't at me.